In this video, we're going to talk about clipper circuits. Now, the two circuits that we have on the board are known as series clipper circuits. The reason why they're called series clipper circuits, well, as you can see, the diode is in series with the input voltage source. Now, let's talk about what happens on the series clipper circuit on the left. So during the positive half cycle, this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative. Conventional current will flow from the positive side through D1. So D1 is going to be on and then through the resistor. Now, during the negative half portion, current will flow in the opposite direction. Well, it would try to flow in the opposite direction, but the diode will prevent it. The diode will be in reverse bias mode, and so it's going to be off. The diode allows current to flow in one direction, but blocks current from flowing in the other direction. So therefore, this part is not going to be there. So this is the input voltage, or the, the, in, the waveform of, at the input. Now at the output, this is what we're going to get. The diode conducts during the positive half cycle, so we're going to get a waveform there. But it doesn't conduct during the negative half cycle, so that part is going to be clipped. So this is how the output waveform is going to look like. So because it clips the negative half cycle, this is called a negative series clipper circuit. It clips the negative part of the waveform. Now let's talk about the voltage. Most silicon diodes have a voltage drop of somewhere between 0.6 and 0.7 volts. So let's go with 0.7 volts. So if the peak voltage at the input is 10 volts, the peak voltage at the output will be 10 minus 0.7 or 9.3 volts. Now let's move on to the circuit on the right. So this is going to be the input signal. It's just going to be the same sine wave. Now during the positive half cycle, current will want to flow this way. However, the diode is reversed now. It's in, going to be in reverse bias mode. So it's off when current tries to flow in that direction. Now during the negative half cycle, current will be able to flow in this circuit. So the diode will be on in this case. So because it's off during the positive half cycle, that portion will be clipped. But it's on during the negative half cycle, so that portion is going to pass through. So since it clips the positive half cycle, this is going to be called the positive series clipper circuit. And the peak voltage here is going to be negative 10 volts. The peak voltage here is going to be negative 10 plus 0.7. So it's going to be negative 9.3 volts. So here's a question for you. Let's say we have this particular circuit. And the signal at the input looks like this. Let's say we have a rectangular waveform. What will be the signal at the output? So during the positive half, the diode will be conducting. It's going to be on during the positive part of the wave. Now during the negative part of the wave, it's going to be off. So because it conducts during the positive half cycle, the positive portion will remain. The negative part will be clipped. So this is going to be the waveform at the output. So if we have a voltage of 5 volts, the voltage now, the peak voltage, will be 4.3 volts. So all you got to do is simply clip the negative part. This is a negative series clipper circuit. Now let's move on to the shunt clipper circuit or the parallel clipper circuits. Notice that this time 
the diode is parallel to the input voltage source. It's not in series with it. Now let's talk about what's going to happen during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. So during the positive half cycle, current is going to flow from the positive side through RS. RS is a series current limiting resistor. It'll prevent too much current from flowing into D1. Now in this half cycle, it's not going to flow through D1 because D1 is reverse bias. And so D1 is going to be off, but it is going to flow through RL. And so what we have is a voltage divider circuit. Now the output is going to have this, the same shape as the input, but the voltage at the output is going to equal the voltage of the input times RL over RL plus RS. Now let's talk about what's going to happen during the negative half cycle of the sine wave. So during the negative half cycle, current is going to flow in the other direction. This time, diode 1 will be on. And the voltage drop of a silicon diode is 0.7. So that's going to be the voltage across the load resistor. So the output will have a waveform that looks like this. That's going to be negative 0.7 volts. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's say we have an input signal with a sine wave with a peak voltage of 10 volts. And let's say that RS, the series current limiting resistor, is 10 kilo ohms, and the load resistance is also 10 kilo ohms. And the voltage drop across the diode is 0.7 volts. What will be the output waveform across the load resistor? So first, we need to calculate the output voltage when or during the positive half cycle of the sine wave. And so that's going to be the input voltage, which is 10. That is the input peak voltage times RL divided by the sum of RS and RL, which is 20K. So then the output voltage is going to be half of 10. It's going to be 5 volts. So the positive half cycle will go up to 5 volts. Now the negative half cycle is just going to be the voltage drop of the diode. So we're going to have a waveform that looks like this. And then the pattern will continue. So this is going to be negative 0.7. Now how would you describe this particular circuit? Would you describe it as a positive shunt clipper circuit or a negative shunt clipper circuit, what would you say? So which part of the sine wave is being clipped, the positive part or the negative part? We can clearly see that the negative part of the sine wave has been clipped. So this circuit is a negative shunt clipper circuit. The negative part of the input signal was clipped in this example. So now we have a similar circuit where RS and RL are still 10 kilo ohms. But this time, we've introduced a battery in this circuit. So given the signal at the out, I mean at the input, what is the signal at the output in this example? During the positive half cycle, current is going to flow in this direction. And so D1 is going to be on during the positive half cycle. So what will be the voltage across RL? The voltage across RL is going to be the voltage drop of the diode plus the 6 volt battery. So the voltage across RL at this point will be 6.7 volts. So to draw the output waveform, it's going to be clipped at 6.7 volts. And this time, it's not at 0.7 volts because of the battery. So we're going to get something that looks like this. 
Now, during the negative portion of the sine wave, current is going to flow in the other direction. It's going to be blocked by D1, so D1 will now be off, but it will flow through RL. And so it's going to behave as a voltage divider circuit. With the two 10 kilo ohm resistors, we know that the voltage across RL is going to be half of 10 volts. So half of negative 10 is negative 5. But it's going to maintain the same waveform. So it's going to look like that. Whereas the positive part will be clipped. So this is the waveform we're going to get in this circuit. And so by introducing a battery, you can determine the maximum clip to voltage. Now, what type of circuit do we have here? We know we have a shunt clipper circuit, but is it a positive shunt clipper circuit or a negative shunt clipper circuit? This one is going to be a positive shunt clipper circuit because a portion of the positive wave, I mean, let me say that again. A portion of the positive half cycle of the sine wave was clipped. So therefore, this is called a positive shunt clipper circuit, but more specifically, a positive bias shunt clipper circuit. The reason why this is a bias clipper circuit is because we're using a DC source to set the limit of the output voltage. Now consider this circuit. We have the two resistors, which are the same 10 kilo ohm resistors, and we have a xenodiode instead of a regular diode. And let's say the voltage drop for this xenodiode is 5 volts, and the signal at the input has a peak voltage of 20 volts. What is the waveform at the output? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So let's talk about the positive half cycle of the sine wave first. So current will flow through RS, and it will flow through the xenodiode. But the xenodiode is in reverse bias mode. When it's in reverse bias mode, the voltage drop will be 5 volts. Now, if the xenodiode wasn't there, the voltage drop will be, I mean, the voltage across RL will be 20 times 10 over 10 plus 10, which is 10. Now, what you want to do is you want to compare the voltage drop across the xenodiode with the voltage due to the voltage divider network. And you want to pick the small of the two. So because this is less, the voltage across RL will be the voltage of the xenodiode. So at the output during the positive half cycle, it's going to be clipped at 5 volts. So here this is 20, and now that's 5. Now, during the negative portion of the sine wave, current is going to flow in this direction. So here it was reverse bias, and now the xenodiode is forward bias. When the xenodiode is in forward, forward bias mode, the voltage drop is the same as the voltage of a typical silicon diode, 0.7 volts. And so this portion will be clipped at 0.7 volts. So we're going to have, in this case, both sides are clipped in this circuit. So the voltage will vary from negative 0.7 to 5 volts. Now let's consider one more example. We have a sine wave with a peak voltage of 15 volts. Our S, the current limit of resistor, is 1 kilo ohm, and the load resistance is 10 kilo ohms. We have two xenodiodes, D1 and D2, and they both have a xenovoltage of 12 volts. Go ahead and draw the waveform at the output across RL. So at the input, we have a waveform that looks like this, with a voltage of 15 volts. So now let's see what's going to happen during the positive half cycle. So current will flow through RS, and it's going to flow through D1. Now, D1 is in reverse 
bias mode. So it's going to be on, but the voltage drop will be 12 volts. It's going to be the Zener voltage during reverse bias mode. Now, as the current flows through D2, it's going to be in forward bias mode. So the voltage drop will be the same as a typical silicon diode, and we're going to go with 0.7 volts. So during the positive half cycle, the voltage across RL is potentially 12.7 volts. But now let's compare that with the voltage due to the voltage divider network. So that's going to be the input voltage of 15 times RL divided by RS plus RL. So that's going to be 11K. So 15 times 10 divided by 11, that's 13.63. So then we need to compare this voltage and the voltage across the diodes. So because this is less, that's going to be the voltage across RL. So it's going to be clipped at 12.7 volts. So it's going to look like a sine wave until it reaches 12.7, and then we're going to have a horizontal line. Now let's see what's going to happen during the negative half cycle of the sine wave. So current is going to flow in the other direction. Now it's going to flow through D2. D2 is in reverse bias mode. And so the voltage across that will be 12. And then as it flows through D1, that's in forward bias mode with a voltage drop of 0.7. So on the other side, it's going to be clipped at... 12.7, but negative 12.7. So it's clipped on both sides evenly. And so this is a very useful circuit because you can prevent the output voltage from getting too high. So this circuit is very useful as a transient pr a protector. Let's say if you're dealing with inductors, which can generate huge voltages when the current changes, it can protect your circuit from voltage spikes. So the maximum voltage in this circuit will be 12.7. Whenever it exceeds 12.7, D1 and D2 will conduct, preventing the voltage from going beyond that. So you can think of this as a voltage-limiting circuit.